Hey guys, it's Charmise Idris here and lately I've really been getting into natural colorants for my soap. So I wanted to do an experiment of all of the different types of colorants, not all, but a lot of the different types of colorants you can use for your soap. So I'm actually making two videos. Today's video is about the different clays that will change your soap colors and of course give it different properties. Um, and then the other video will be about other colorants such as like kale powder, celery, um, charcoal, paprika and you'll be able to see what it looks like when I first make it and then I also decided to wait six weeks to record this video <laughs> so that you can see what it looks like after it's fully cured. So let's go ahead and get into this video. So the clays I decided on for this project were raw sole or rosal clay, French green clay, purple Brazilian clay, kaolin clay, dead sea mud powder, bentonite clay, rose clay, and red Moroccan clay. And of course there were a few other clays I could have chose, but these were the ones that were the most easily accessible to me. Um, I got these all between brambleberry.com, but mostly from nature's garden candles. For this experiment, I decided to use this mold and I just wrote every type of clay that I'm using on the mold. And I, of course, I also have a control so that you can see what the actual color of the soap would be without any additives. And then I'm bound to have some left over, so I do have this small soap mold as well so that I don't waste any soap and I'll probably just use it for hand soap. For the recipe, I wanted to have a very simple, just olive oil, mostly olive oil, with coconut oil and castor oil, and I do want to keep this soap at a very light trace for as long as possible because I'm doing them all almost at the same time. And I also decided that I was not going to add any fragrance oil to the soap just so that I can get what the actual color would be like without any additives. In general, I found that a lot of people recommended starting off with one teaspoon of colorant per pound of soap or per pound of oils in soap. I'm not going to make it that confusing. I'm just going to do per pound of soap. <laughs> so I have one fourth of a teaspoon of clay in each of these. And I'm actually going to add three fourths of a teaspoon of water just to make it disperse much easier into the soap. And to that, I will add four ounces of soap into each cup and I know that was quite a bit of information all at one time but basically I'm adding one teaspoon of clay per pound of soap and in order to disperse it much quicker and easier into the soap I'm going to add distilled water and I know um, with other colorants it's recommended using a, like a light carrier oil but with clay it's recommended using distilled water and when you add the distilled water to the soap, you wanna add it um, into a one to three ratio. So if you're doing one teaspoon of clay, you wanna do three teaspoons of water or one tablespoon basically. So now that I have my first four clays ready to be dispersed into the soap, I actually have to make the soap. So I have let the lye solution and the oils cool down to about 75 degrees or room temperature because I do want to keep my trace as thin as possible for as long as possible so that I can get all these clays mixed in. So I mix the soap just long enough for it to be emulsified and I'm going to pour out the control just so that at the end of the experiment I can see what the actual color of the soap would have been without any additives. And then I'm going to go ahead and measure 4 ounces of soap into each clay cup and pour it into its designated area.
So out of all of the clays that I used today, only one of them gave me an issue and it was bentonite. I don't know why me and bentonite did not get along, but as you can see, it is very clumpy. Um, I did it the same way I did the rest of them, but I decided to redo it actually just to make sure I got a good result, um, like it nice and mixed in because I didn't want to just have pieces of it sitting in the soap. So I actually used alcohol in place of water and it actually worked. All right guys, so it has been six or seven weeks since I have made that soap and now I'm just gonna show you guys what they look like fully cured. So here is the one that I did not add anything to. So this was the control. Um, yes, that's just what it looks like, just the regular soap. Here is the purple Brazilian clay. I love this color, but I do wanna let you guys know, of course the color will depend on how much clay you add. So I do actually make a purple Brazilian clay soap and it is much lighter than this because I use much less clay than I did in this one. Here is the Dead Sea clay. Here's the rose clay, nice and rosy and pink. All right, and here's the Kaolin clay, Kaolin, I don't know, Kaolin clay, I think it's called. But yeah, here it is. Um, you can see that it is almost exactly, actually kind of exactly the same as the um, control. And this is what the red Moroccan clay turned out to be. The French green, not so green, but still a nice color. <laughs> The bentonite, which gave me so much trouble, but I actually like it. And then lastly, the Russell clay, or Russell, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> but yes, here are my clays. Um, I'd say that the purple is definitely my favorite, followed by the pink. And then I actually am loving the Dead Sea clay, so I think I actually might make some Dead Sea soap. Thank you guys so much for tuning into my little experiment. Um, I do want to shout out my people over on Patreon because some of them actually helped me choose the colors for these videos. Um, and I'm actually trying to figure out if I should do one for melt and pour soap um, for natural colorants. So if you want to see that, please let me know. I can make it happen. <laughs> um, but if you like the video, please like the video. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe. All right, y'all. Peace.